In this video, I'm going to explain the stable version of counting sort. So let's say that this is your array and you want to sort this array from least to greatest. The first step is to figure out what is the largest number in this array. So the largest number is 4. We're going to create an array with index from 0 to 4. So that's going to be size 5. If you just take the largest number plus 1, you're going to get the size of this array. We're going to go through the index from 0 to 4 and see how many times they occurred inside this array. So 0 occurs 0 times. We don't have a 0 in here. 1 occurs 1 time. We have a 1 here. 2 occurs 1 time. We have a 2 here. 3 occurs 2 times. We have 3 here and here. And 4 occurs 3 times. So 4, 4, and 4. We're going to fill in the array like this, where these values are the number of times that the index occurred inside this array. Let me explain in more detail. So in the code, what actually happens is that our array will be initially filled with zeros. And then we're going to start at the first number, 3. We see that 3 occurred one time, so we just increment this to 1. We have a 4, so this becomes 1. We have a 2, so here it's going to be 1. And we see 3 again, so increment this to 2. And then we see a 4, so increment this to 2. We see a 1, so increment this to 1. And we see a 4 again, so increment this to 3. We're now on to the second part of counting sort, which is to find out something called the prefix sums. There are two ways to do this. The first way is the intuitive way, and that's going to help us understand why counting sort works. And the second way is the fast way. I'm going to show you both ways. If you want to find out the prefix sum, all you have to do is take the current value and add it to the rest. So for example, let's say what is the prefix sum at index 4? Well, just take 0, plus 1, plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. And that's going to give you 7. And now what is the prefix sum for index 3? Well, just take 0, plus 1, plus 1, and plus 2. So that's going to be 4. And just note here, where does this 4 come from? So this 4 comes from 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3s. So again, we have 1, 1, right? 1 occurred one time. We have 1, 2. So 2 occurred one time. And then we have a 2 here. And that represents 3. And 3 occurred two times. So that's why I say that the 4 comes from 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3s. The next step is simply replace the values with our new values. So here we have 0, we have 1, we have 2, 4, and 7. So these numbers actually tell us something. They're very useful. And why is that? Let's take one value as an example. What does S3 equal 4 mean? It means that there are four numbers in our original array that are less than or equal to 3. And those numbers are 1, 2, 3, and 3. So in the final sorted array, so let's say we have the sorted array, you can clearly see that the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 3, 1, 2, 3, and 3 here, they must go from index 0 to index 3. So right before index 4. So what this means is that S3 equals 4 tells us that all 3s must be placed before index 4. And that's true. So all 3s must be placed before index 4. So there's a formula, and the formula is that if the prefix sum of x equals y, then all x will be placed before index y in the final sorted array. And in a moment, I will show you how to use this formula and our prefix sum to actually sort our array. Now, let me show you the second way of finding out the prefix sum. And this one is the fast and efficient way. So let's go back to our frequency array when we first find out how many times each number occurred inside the array. We're going to start at the second value. Just take our current value and add to the previous one. So 1 plus 0 is going to be 1 like this. And same thing here. Take 1 plus 1, that's going to be 2, and put it here. And then take 2 plus 2, that's going to be 4, and put 4 in here. And then take 3 plus 4, that's going to be 7, and put 7 in here. 
So that's how you find the prefix sum and this method is the fast way. And we're almost done. We're on to the last part of counting sort. So let me show you how to use the prefix sum to sort this array from least to greatest. And we're going to store the sorted value in the output array. We're going to scan from right to left. So starting at the last value, we have four. Now in the prefix sum, we see that S4 equals seven. So that means all fours must be placed before index seven. We can just put the four at index six right here. And now when you put a number from our array into the output, you have to decrement the prefix sum. So you have to decrement, so the seven becomes six. Let's repeat this process for the next number. So we have one. In the prefix sum, we have this. So S1 equals one. That means all ones must be placed before index one. We can just put it at index zero. And now we just put one number from here into the output array. So we have to decrement the value. So we decrement and this becomes zero. It's just these four steps. So let me go through these four steps again for the next number. The next number is four. So we're going to put four into A. Then we look at the prefix sum. So at index four, we have S4 equals six. This means all fours must be placed before index six. We can just put the four at index five. So that's basically this part. So S at A, right? S at four, that's going to be six. So six minus one is going to be five. And then output at B equals A. So output at five equals four. And that's basically putting it into the output array here. And then once you put a number from the array into the output, you have to decrement the value. So six becomes five, right? So S four minus one. So that's going to be five. We move on to the next number, which is three. And then in the prefix sum, we have S3 equals four. This means all threes must be placed before index four. We can just put it at index three. And now you put one number from the array into the output. You have to decrement the value. You have to decrement the prefix sum. So this four is going to be three. Now on to the next number, which is two. We see that S2 equals two. This means all twos must be placed before index two. We can just put at index one. So we put the two here. And then we decrement the value. So two becomes one. We're so close to finishing. Let's move on to the next number. We have four. So S4 equals five. So all fours must be placed before index five. We can just put at index four. And now we decrement the prefix sum, so 5 becomes 4. Now on to the last number 3. So S3 equals 3. This means all 3s must be placed before index 3. We can just put it at index 2. And then we decrement the prefix sum, so the 3 becomes a 2. We now have the sorted array in the output. Let's take a look at the code in Python. So we have a function called counting sort or count sort, whichever one you want to name it. And then the input is going to be an array with values as non-negative integers. So what does non-negative integer mean? It means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, as long as it's not negative. This also means that counting sort only works for integers. So if you have decimals, I recommend you use something else such as quick sort and merge sort. Now in the code, we're going to find the max value. We're going to initialize the count array and then loop through the array and then count how many times each number occurs. And this part is for calculating the prefix sum. And finally, we build the output array. So the best average and worst cases are all n plus k. And the space is also n plus k, where k is the size of the count array. And that's determined by the largest value in the input array. And that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to subscribe and share with your classmates. And I'll see you in the next video.